Ha, ah, wonderful Twitch lag. Is this ever going to show up? Ha, ah, wonderful Twitch lag. Is this no. ever going to show up? Ah, wonderful Twitch lag. Is this no. ever going to show up? Ah, wonderful Twitch lag. Is this no. ever going to show up? I should have just fixed the echo. So, um, what do we want to do here? It's been a little while. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I was doing. I have some idea, but um, in fact, I'm pretty sure that the next thing I needed to do was fix the feet. <clears throat> because the feet animation uh, have some discontinuity in them. I'm not exactly sure what the reason is, although I can make some guesses, but it's probably better to just look at the code and look at it running. Although it's hard, I remember it's hard to see it running, so. Yeah, if, if I had my, well, I'll just say that in chat. Um, so, so to recap, since it's been a little while, um, hopefully this, these notes are correct. So this was the last stream it was 49. I didn't actually check <coughs> and you have to forgive me. I have a little cough. Um, so to recap, as I recall, we put in this kind of crappy character rendering where we're drawing everything as cylinders, boxes? I don't even remember. Cylinders, probably, because that's the thing that you can do most easily uh, with the data that we have. I'm trying to run it. It's sitting there thinking, oh, I hit, it. I hit the key in the wrong window. Um, I don't remember. What do I... Oh, right. It's the third person point of view. Yeah, okay. So here we go. Right. They're boxes. And they don't orient correctly, which is fine. The top ones do, but the legs don't. You can see the legs are diagonal. <clears throat> so, um, basically put in a little walk cycle, which was just making the feet follow a circle. And then we're doing IK to get the feet to where they are. And then we replace the circle with finding where the ground is in some way uh, that I don't remember, but that must be what's going on here. And obviously we need to put in arms. Um, and here you can see, oh, I thought the foot fell down. The foot didn't fall down. It looked like it fell down. Oh, there it does. Yeah. Nope, it didn't fall down very far, though, did it? Oh, that's because it's fully extended now. It's trying to place the foot on the ground, but the torso isn't moved down to compensate. Because uh, the way this all works is there's just the same old physics that's always been there, and then we're doing this animation to try to match 
to where it is, um, which means that the controls are still as, just as responsive as they were, which is just uh, generally a nice thing to do. And it's also good for AI because it means the AI can just move by whatever mechanism. It doesn't even have to be physics. Like if you want to make your AI just follow paths automatically without running any physics, uh, they can, and then this system can still try to make them look like they're running. I mean, it's not going to look like great animation ever, right? It's going to... Um, but for an indie game, for crappy animations that you see in indie games, um, it's totally tolerable. And, I mean, you can work on it hard and do a good job, which is what the uh, the wolf uh guy with uh, Overgrowth... Uh, which we showed a demo of some of the early their early ideas for that that we're based this on. <clears throat> so, uh, so let's actually look at what the code is doing because I don't that part I don't remember. I remembered the kind of end result, but um, so this is all in the renderer. So I guess it would be an object renderer. Yeah, it looks like it. So see bone. Oh no, that's the machine. Yeah, maybe it's not an object renderer. It may just be in the. It's in main. I don't remember now. We do all the object rendering hackily in main right now. Yep. To do. Hey, look, I have a giant to do list. All right, that's good. So let's refamiliarize ourselves with the code here. We have the skeleton shape, which is this whole thing. So it lets you configure all this stuff. Right, and so the legs are not vectors because. <coughs> um, they are being treated as uh, a square cross-section. Not for any particular reason. So they could be turned into vectors as well. Find foot placement. So we have a vec poly 5. Why do we have five vectors? Ah, because it's... Um, Um, okay, so this is a function that says As I've said before, I can't talk and write comments at the same time. So if I actually want to write the comment, I just have to write it. And then... <coughs> okay, so the whole thing is stateless. <coughs> and that's actually the biggest thing we need to fit. Well, it's got this, this bit of state. Um, so let's, um, so we, well, how do we output data? Is it just this BA stuff? What is BA? Biped animation state. No, that's stateful. Okay. So there is state. It's the biped animation state. Um, and we update the state here. We update the state here, and then we render from the state. So it looks like we can just monitorize this without much concern. just copy all those parameters because I don't know which ones are needed yet and maybe the compiler will tell us no actually it won't for it won't tell us that for locals <clears throat> can remove a level of invitation and then we need to call that <coughs> and that'll just let us move that code to somewhere else if we want to later. It actually separates the bits of logic of the 
uh, wait, I thought I moved this. Oh, I must have copied it instead of, yep, yeah, I did copy it instead of. <clears throat> All right, like that, and then we can move this stuff in. And then we can get rid of level of indentation. All right. All right, so there's a lot of interleaved graphics in here, drawing cylinders and drawing boxes. Um, so let's see if that worked. Whoops, I need to compute SK. Mag SC are all unused, but I'm not sure if it's in this function or in the other function. Okay. Yep, I saw these. Uh, when were the legs added? That's that was the last stream. The I, you can see this IK better model stuff. Um. Okay, so it looks unchanged. That's weird. That, okay, it couldn't find the foot position, but it had moved the torso down. That's something to think about. <clears throat> like this, th this whole system will work way better on smooth terrain than it does on this bumpy terrain, and we want it to work on the bumpy terrain, obviously. But the whole remember the whole trick of the system is having two, a totally independent physics from the animation system and so that was just a case of where those two conflicted. The physics decided that the character fits down in the hole and dropped the torso down and then the animation system hadn't updated the legs yet so we just have to <clears throat> make sure stuff deals with that. I see yeah I see the popping there pretty clearly. Alright so now let's try to figure out what this code is doing. Uh, it's going to call that function that we commented above earlier. So foot spacing times height over 2. What would that mean? Why is it times height? What was I thinking? I guess I just want <clears throat> to make this. So this is probably unit list. And, this, and it's intentionally just expressed as a relative to height so that when you make a smaller character, it adjusts. Of course, it should be probably leg height based, but whatever. It's a first approximation or whatever. Um, so I should be able to like change the AIs to be smaller, and we would see them run faster. Uh, so how do you throw an AI? I don't remember anymore. T? Yep. And then you have to make them pathfind to you because the feet start broken. And I don't remember how to do that. Path? No, that's profile. Um, oh, I accidentally slowed time. There we go. Yeah, so. But they are the same height as the player right now, and they snap on those diagonals and stuff, so. <coughs> so it doesn't look that great. All right. Um, so what do we do here? Y right and Z right. So these are the position that the feet want to be. So here's that thing I was saying. It creates a circle. It tries to position around on the circle. Then first it's a world space and drops it down to the to the nearest voxel. So it floors it and adds a little bit. Then it takes that point and does that polygon search find foot placement. So whenever your foot placement height, whenever you move over a voxel and the foot height changes, that's going to snap. But even on flat ground, we see it popping. Um, 
again, I don't know if you can see it at this frame rate, but I can. The, the thing teleports between phases or something. So maybe the phases don't match. That's probably true. Okay, but so then we find where we want the foot to be. But probably then, depending on where in the cycle we are, we... Ah, uh, okay, what we're doing is we're having them follow the curve, the, the circle, um, for half of the cycle, and then for the other half of the cycle, they do the foot plant. <clears throat> and so what we need to do is make the curve not be a circle, but be a path from their current uh, position to their target position. But... Um, Um, the issue is that uh, so brush brush size there we go um, so if you know if the character is is here, and the character is just a point rather than, but you know, with the physics is a box, but let's ignore that. Um, how do you switch it? Uh, oh, right, I should use that program I installed. What's the program called? I, I should still have it on my desktop. Don't save. It's, wait, which one was the one that I was happy with? Whoops. Um, so. Literally zero characters on screen are readable in, in uh, mobile, that's too bad. Uh, let me check again. The yeah, that's my normal font size. So, um, so yeah. So here's the character's position, and the foot wants to do something like this. Like here's the ground, and so the foot wants to be here, and wants to end up here. Right. That's this is one foot. And then, you know, meanwhile, the other foot is here, say. Um, so this foot wants to do a trajectory like this. <clears throat> and we're not going to worry necessarily about, like, it might clip through this corner depending on where exactly it is, and we just won't worry about that. Uh, it's something you could worry about and, tr and trace. But let's talk about the discontinuity problem. So when you do this stuff statelessly, what you're always doing is sort of uh, um, based on, so mm -hmm, let's see if we can explain this. <clears throat> when the foot goes down, when it finally goes down into the down position, you're back here and this is the leading foot. So when that foot goes down, there's some way you compute where it is. It's you take where you currently are, which way you're going, project ahead along the direction that you're going, and you find some point, and then you cast down to the ground and find the find the ground point, and you say, okay, that's where the foot's going to land. <clears throat> okay, and blamo, the foot goes down. Now you're moving, and for the first half of it, you don't have to move this foot. Um, well, actually, it's got to be here. Okay. So we get to here, and actually that's about when the foot should be down. Okay, so when you're here, you're going to start moving the foot, let's say. I, this isn't correct, but my illustration is too terrible to do this. So um, <clears throat> uh, so when you're here, what do you do? Well, you project forward where you're going, and where you'll be by the time the foot needs to go down and you say okay I'm gonna be here when the foot needs to go down so then you cast out and then you cast down and you find where the foot needs to go 
Okay, this is all great and wonderful. Um, a different way you could do it, and this is not going to be very clear from the illustration I can see because this is a, a time problem again, and so it's so hard to show these. Um, a different way you could do it is to like always be extending the foot and always casting down and say, well, that's where I want the foot to be. And that'll change over time. Uh, but it'll mean like you're trying to make the foot go to here and then to here and then to here. And by the time the foot actually goes down, you're trying to get to here. And if you do that, one of the problems you'll have is that the foot is trying to go to here and then trying to go to here. Okay, why would you ever do this? So if you're trying to be, well, there's two different reasons. Gosh, this is so complicated to explain. Um, I mean, maybe it's not complicated to explain. It's complicated to explain without me having thought through how to explain it. Um, there's just a couple of different competing factors, and none of them I explain it on its own. So I kind of need to establish all of the competing factors. So this, why you would want to do this is totally a different issue. And I need to backtrack to explain what's going on here. So if you're looking from above at this character, and they're walking, and so they got a foot here and a foot here as they go this way. Um, let's say right now we lift our foot. So we project that the foot is going to land here. But then a moment later, we move forward a little bit, but we also turn. So this foot is still on the ground. This foot has started moving towards this location. But now we go, you know what? We actually want the foot to land over here. So we've changed our mind about where the foot's going. And this is going to happen continuously every frame. We're going to keep changing our mind about where the foot needs to go. Um... So we kind of dynamically need to be changing our mind about it. So something caught in my microphone. Anyway, um, so uh, so every frame will be continually changing where our target is, right? So this, our target can can follow a little path that, and we turned around again, and now we finally decide to put the foot there. And during all these intervening points, there may be voxels in the way that change the foot elevation, and change it back down, and etc. Um, the physics doesn't care about any of that, right? The physics is just doing this, and of course the character box probably you know is like that or something like not it's not the full way of the feet a full extension but um, large enough that it could impact this the character might go up and then come back down on the way to doing this um, and that can all cause funky looks and the feet may not stay on the ground or we have to cheat that we already have a cheat in for how the camera slides up when you step up, we, when we step up, we actually currently teleport up all the way instantly, and the camera slides up to follow it. And we may need to do a similar thing with the biped, where the torso needs to slide up. And if you hit it and then come off, the torso wants to go up a little bit and then come back down without ever finishing going up. <clears throat> all right, so then back to this. So one thing you could do while dealing with this is, rather than projecting all the way forward, because that projection all the way forward here can be really wrong um, because you might turn you might stop you never actually try to get your foot out that far and it doesn't matter when you're at this phase of the animation right with this foot way back here there's really no reason to know the exact point you're trying to get the foot to not until the foot gets up and out some do you really need to know the final target so a kind of a hack you could do, you could consider doing, is that you just always, instead of projecting out, saying, okay, I estimate that at the time the foot goes down, I'm gonna be here, and then the foot needs to go here. Instead of doing any of that projection, you could just say, well, where, based on where I currently am, here's where I would put the foot. And let's try to make the foot go there. And as time evolves, I will automatically seek the right target, right? So that's saying, in here, you would project it to, to, it to being here, and then here, you would project it to being here. 
and every frame that would get updated and as smoothly as the character is turning or accelerating or decelerating, that point will move smoothly. Um, so that's a thing you could do. But if you do it, you will still have these discontinuities. So I don't know uh, which of those two is actually better. I assume projecting all the way forward it's kind of better because it does, it is weird to be searching Try to be trying to get the foot to the wrong place because you want the foot to follow this nice arc right and if you have a temporary foot estimate here like are you trying to follow that arc to that like that that arc isn't the arc you want to be following so if you were trying to say at each frame I'm currently at this point in the frame I'm at this point in the step I'm halfway through where the foot should be so then you get try to get the foot to there even though where you want the foot to actually be is there in the in the clean case the other thing is that when you're turning rapidly um the animation is going to be harder probably to tell exactly what's going on in it so it's not a big deal if that if it's not perfect although stopping and starting you will probably notice All right, so um, then uh, because the because of this phenomenon, it can go up and down. So you know, suppose we were accelerating, and so and there's a step up, and we're here, right? And so. Uh, at initially when we start at the speed we're at where we project that the foot's gonna go here but by the time we reach our full speed and we still haven't landed we realize our foot needs to be here so what can we do about that well initially that means we're gonna to try to follow an arc of the foot like that but by the end it needs it turns out we want to have followed an arc like that this is not the accurate arc like what path a foot actually takes while walking it's probably different but whatever um, and there's not much we can do like we, we can't predict this the whole point of this is that we're accelerating in an unpredictable fashion so we cannot predict that the foot's going to end up there so we have a popping problem which is that you know we're here we're here we predicted the foot is trying to get to here we could get arbitrarily close to there and then suddenly rise and that's just going to have to pop there's nothing we can do about it because we can't have predicted it um this is again why smooth terrain uh, is easier to solve this on because that is not a discontinuity there's not a big jump but we can try to tolerate say like here is when we realize we could be at this point in the path and then sort of adjust our path up to here the problem with this i mean it's totally great this is wonderful you can totally implement it and we probably will have to but the reason this is not trivial is because it's no longer an interpolation. So to get finally to the code point of these different cases, um, you know, if, uh, if we uh, predict where the foot wants to be, we can, and we want the foot to get from there to there, what we can do is we can just call lerp, right? We can just say lerp, T of X of Y where this position is X and this position is Y and that'll linearly move the foot along okay and then we need to like do some hack for the Z um, you know we want a cur effectively we want to lerp a curve you know lerp is not the right word but um, I you know you need to accelerate at the beginning and decelerate at the end maybe uh, maybe not friction no you do have to uh at least at the beginning it would definitely have a little acceleration um so maybe it's a smooth step or you know whatever um but uh and then we realize though that our y is going to be continually changing which means if we've already lerped part way towards our y and then our y changes discontinuously um the whole system is going to pop if our y changes continuously then actually lerping between the two still works um you know, even though this is y of t. Uh, well, that's totally unreadable. Um, that will actually still be continuous, 
but it won't be linear. So like the linear response over time, right, as we go from x to y, this is point x. I probably shouldn't have put that at the origin. So we go from x to y, right, here's our lerp. We want that kind of smoothness, we want, or continuity at least. And then if we make y change over time, so x is here, and our initial y is here, but y changes over time and moves down to here. Then x lerping towards y is gonna start going in that direction, and then it's gonna continue going in that direction, and then like that, and then like that, and then like that, and then it gets there, you know, whatever. I didn't quite do it right. But uh, if y is moving, that's with y sort of changing discreetly. If y changed six times over the course of this interpolation, that's the result you would get. And so um, if you, you know, do a more fine-grained thing, then it starts to look like that. You know, if you, if you use more, if y is more segmented. And you can see that this is approaching continuity and it will be continuous if y itself is continuous instead of discontinuous. It'll end up following a little curve. Oops. Probably a quadratic. I, assuming this is a linear motion, that's probably a quadratic. Um, Change the webcam thing. So I don't. Oh, right, this way. I remember how to do it now. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, shoot, that hit this. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that's any better. I think that's worse, so. I have lights explicitly for this purpose, so. Um, all right, so. <clears throat> in this particular case, uh, that's not a very strong curve, but I'm pretty sure it's like quadratic. So. Uh, quadratic is fine. I said I wanted to move along curve, but that's a quadratic in time, not in space. It's not this curve that way. It's a speed up effect. Um, if uh, if this position, if this y were moving from here to here, it would cause this thing to uh, start fast and get slower and get slower and get slower. And of course, in one sense, that may be the result we want because this target point is changing over time. Um, but uh, I'd rather it be explicit than uh, than that way, given that I have to solve the continuity problem anyway. So the continuity problem, right, is that this changes discontinuously. Where was that drawing? Right here. Um, and so if you interpolate them separately, it's going to follow that curve and then follow that curve. Right, which is going to cause a pop here where it jumps between these two positions when this thing jumps between those two positions. So we have to actually be stateful and say, here's where the foot currently is. Right, and so that's the whole point of the lerp. The lerp lets us just keep track of the endpoints and keep uh, computing some function that shows where we should be between them. And we don't have to worry about what our current state is. And this was what I meant when I st said it was stateless. Um, Instead, we actually have to keep track of where the foot currently is in midair so that when there's this discontinuity, we can actually change the path of our curve. And I don't know what the math is to do this. I have no idea. I always use LERPs for everything, so we'll have to figure that out. Um, I just would like it if you didn't squint so much. Yeah, well, that's just uh, life in the big city. So... Um,
right, right. When reporting bugs, report the symptoms. Don't report the, don't report your expected fix, what you think the fix should be. So the symptoms there was you don't like me squinting, which is fine. Like that's a perfectly reasonable thing to not like. But it's that if that was the issue, I could have told you up front, um, because that's been complained about before. So, um, so yeah, we have to figure out how to do that continuity stateful foot position. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. So uh, we'll have to say, okay, the foot is this far through the phase that we that we know, so which is the the t to the lerp. And then, do we want to know where it was always? Like as soon as we get to this transition, we don't care about where it was. It would also be good if the velocity itself was continuous, but that brings us into the space of needing a controller to f to find the path. Um, I guess we could allow the derivative discontinuity and not be too worried about it at that point. So if we're doing a LERP, we need to keep track of where the foot is, but for this part of the path, we definitely don't need to know where the foot was. And you know, we could back figure a fake foot here or something um, that we would be interpolating from. But, and though, though then remember all of this, this position is actually updating all the time potentially. It's just that the moment of discontinuity is where we can see this change, where it would be discontinuous out here. And so while this is changing the whole time, uh, even though it's not discontinuous, if we can, for, if we, we have a method that allows us to forget about this foot location when we get to that point, we might as well be forgetting about the foot location the whole time and using that same algorithm the whole way. Just not, it won't have visible disc, uh, changes, but it's deal, to deal with that change in the position. So whatever this algorithm is, um, should be able to solve that stuff. Yes, the, that's the, the assumption here is that, as I said, once we get the foot is here and then we decide on the discontinuity, uh, there's not going to be anything to, to do to avoid it, right? In that case, we're going to get the foot to here and then we're going to lerp it up to here. But the time here, you know, this is going to have taken 99% and this will take 1% of the time and it'll be effectively discontinuous. Um, but we implement it as a smooth lerp from here to here as well. Um, so yeah, we can't deal with every case, but we can make as many cases as we want look, as many cases as we can look good. Um, and if the ground were continuous instead of discontinuous, we would be able to hide pretty much everything because this has been done. People have implemented this in other environments. Um, but I don't really know like how to do this except as a controller problem, which I really don't want it to be because those are messy. Like I have to keep track of the foot's velocity and stuff, which is gross. That's why LERPs are so great. You don't worry about any of those details. You just keep track of the endpoints. Um... How do you do this?
Uh, whoops. Stupid. Um, how would you do this? Well, you could solve it as a lerp. And then back solve like I was talking about. Back solve that this lerp is from here. And we're going to allow the velocity to be discontinuous, so we don't actually need to know the velocity. So we just need to know the position and then back solve. And ignoring the fact that I don't know what, how to make this curve look reasonable. Um, and then if you were doing that, you could probably find how, figure out how to do that. Uh, yeah, if I don't care about the velocity matching, then I don't have to care about the velocity matching anywhere else. I don't have to store the velocity. Just base it on how far away you are and how far through the phase you are. Compute a new velocity every time. That's probably reasonable. All right. Let's see what we can do. Still don't know how to really make it match the curve. So, update biped. So we do the circle. Z right, Z left less than zero. Uh, So it looks like this is just put spacing y right. Let's, is O the object? Why are there only two parts? Oh, flat. Flat meaning uh, in 2D, I guess. Is that what flat means? Is that in util? Where does that live? Uh, in world, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's because it was an old camera thing. Okay. Uh, oh, right, flat because it's unrotated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're only looking at the orientation. You're not tilting the cam the object. All right, so we ignore the tilt of the object, just its orientation. We find the position for, based on the x and y and ignoring the z. Okay, and it all makes sense. So foot spacing and that. So one thing is through a turn, you maybe want to predict the foot sideways some, and we're not doing that at all here. And this API doesn't make that easy to do but we don't have to worry about it yet. Okay, so it looks like foot spacing is how far ahead we're looking. So it looks like we're actually doing the thing currently where we do keep reprobing the spacing ahead without actually paying attention to where the foot's eventually going to land. So we're doing this thing I was talking about here where we keep probing these extra points even though they're not really meaningful. So I probably need to change that to compute how far ahead it should be, which is based on phase. So um, and what's this? The negative foot spacing. Oh no, okay, this is planting the right foot. Wait. If the right foot is not planted, then we do this computation. The left foot we keep moving it. What is this doing? Why does it add pause.x? Why does it
Oh, I see. Okay. So the first time we hit this, we plant this foot, and that's the only place we're doing this computation. We're not doing it every frame currently. Right, okay, so what it's actually currently doing is it's running everything in that circle animation, and then at the end of the phase, it teleports the foot to the correct footprint place. Um, so what we want to do is reverse this logic, kind of. So... As long as the right foot is not planted, then we want to animate it. And then when we get to the end, let's plant it. And otherwise, let's animate it. So I'm just inverting the structure of this animation code here, which is this code is the old animation code. Okay, now this is going to make sense to me. Now I can see what's going on here. Um, uh, let's re well, let's not reverse that. Okay, and then the left foot is not planted. And the problem with this as written is it never unplants. So I have to add unplanting code, which is why it was written this way. It was because the way it was written, um, the way it was written didn't need extra code to unplant. Um, so what it wants to do is when we're not in that, we unplant. Um, likewise here. Enter that phase. This is just temporary to get this working. Um, so this should be unchanged. Looks right. All right. Now, now that we have the feet separated, we can think about the foot logic more carefully. So. Right, the whole thing is we want to run while this phase is in operation and then one tick after it. And so really the only way to do that is like this. The, the planted is our one tick after that flag. Um, So then, as soon as we run, we unplant. Okay. Wait, did I invert that? Yeah. No, that should be, but it was negated before. Wait. Was it negated? It was negated. How did that? That shouldn't have been right. It shouldn't be negated. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah, yeah. This needs to be negated. Sorry. I wanted to reverse this. I wanted to say greater than equal m pi. And make it be in the same order as the other one. same order. This is we don't need to we don't need to test it's always zero to two pi so 
All right. So, um, what can we do here? Um, all right, so now we can compute the foot the whole time. That was why I was doing this. So now we're computing a foot position the whole time, almost. Do this. There we go. Now we're computing the foot placement the whole time. But now we say, if we're in phase, if we're at the out of our phase, we plant it. Otherwise, sorry, I said that backwards. If we're in our phase, we are still doing the old thing. We're still using foot spacing. We're ignoring foot placement. <coughs> but here we go ahead and place the foot and report the quality of that. Let's check if I broke that. I haven't declared foot yet. Looks like it's still working. Wait, did the foot color change or was it always green and white? I think it was always green and white so I could tell the sides apart. Um, okay, so now we want to do the same thing up here. So now we always compute the foot. we don't do anything with it. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and check that in. Assuming I didn't break it. Oh, now the, oh, no, right. They're both red, but then green and white. Okay. So let's check that in. Oh, I didn't check in that other thing. That's fine. All right. So we haven't changed anything at all, but we've refactored this. So now we're always computing where the foot could go. So let's just go ahead and show that. Just so we can see what we're now computing. And it should just skate along, I think. Yeah, you can't really tell. Oh wait, how's how do I do? I have a way to turn the camera independently. I've forgotten how. There, no, that's not it. There it is. Okay, so one of them skating and the other one isn't. It seems like. Oh no, it's probably switching which foot. Yeah, it is switching which foot. Okay. So that you can see it's always probing a fixed distance ahead, always trying to put the foot a fixed distance ahead now. <clears throat> then we could say, try to estimate out where the foot should actually be. So how do we do that? We're currently using foot spacing, so, and we'll always use foot spacing as the position so we can override foot foot placing. So we have to look at how far through the cycle we are. So we take, a phase um, over m pi and it'll go to 1.0 at m pi basically so we want to clamp that uh, 
Okay, and then that's so that goes zero to one as our foot goes from uh, at, all the way at the back to all the way at the front. <coughs> so uh, our phase is computed this way from time. So we want to convert that back to time. So it's divided by there, so it's times SK cycle period VA gate times two times M pi, but this is times on this side. Make it clear. Um, I wonder if I should change this so I get rid of the factor of two pi. Okay, so that should be in time. So that is time units, how far through we are. We want to know how far away we are. Uh, well, I guess it's just one minus this whole thing. So this goes to zero. Um, this starts at one and goes to zero as phase goes from zero to, to pi. And then the one times the cycle period is the amount of time the whole period takes. And we actually only want half the period, but we're already dividing by two m pi, so I'm not sure if we need to divide by another two or not. I think we do. Yeah, because the phase was for both. Okay, so that should be half the time, which is the time it takes the foot to travel. So now we have float time to foot impact. Might not be right, but maybe it's right. Okay, so now we can take the time to foot impact and add to our foot spacing, it wants to be our velocity. Where do we get our velocity from? Movel. Movel. Movel dot x. Is, do we move along our x-axis? Is that forward? I don't know if x is forward or not. I think it is. Times time to foot impact. All right, let's see what that does. So if this were correct, the foot should just teleport forward. I don't think it's correct. The foot should just, why is it? There it is. The foot should just teleport forward. No, it's still just gliding. So I don't think that's doing anything. Um, maybe it's why. Oh, it's still just gliding. All right, let us change the gate cycle so it's easy. Oh wait, I have a slow motion mode. Uh, yeah, I hit it earlier. It was N, I think. Nope, B. There it is. Okay, so it's also teleporting from its back position forward. Yeah, which is what's expected. Okay, so this is the, still the pure glide. So it's like this isn't uh, computing anything. Um,
take a look what we got here. And the movement speed. Why is it non-zero on the X? Is that in world space, not in... It's in world space, not in... It's not in object space. But it's still pretty glidey. Oh, that was the physics glitching, not going up. Um, okay, so that's a pain. I have to just de uh, I have to extract the forward velocity, and So I need world space to object space. Do I have that? I don't know if I have that. No, nope, I don't. But fortunately, we just negate the angle. That's a pretty trivial function to add. Now we can finally do like this. All right. So the y value looks good. The advanced distance is zero because the time is small. The velocity is big. So the advanced distance is not very big because the time is this small. Um, the time is not correct. The time is a constant. Oh, we're supposed to be phases advancing every time. And then we take the current phase and we extract that. I don't know why would that always be the same value. I guess we could stop the debugger. Uh, we need to be running though. All right, BA phase. BA phase cannot be a constant. Maybe it's always clamping. Maybe I computed that stuff wrong. Yeah, phase is changing. Create an empire when it cycles. Okay, so this need to be minus pi. And then the clamp doesn't work. Okay, so float rel phase. Rel phase equals B A phase minus M pi. Um, if rel phase was zero, rel phase equals 
is one. Nope, it looks so high. Well, phase equals this be a clamp. No, phase over a pi. Why was that negated? Because we have the one minus, so it shouldn't be negated. Um, zero, one, but we've already clamped against zero here, and that can't be bigger than that, so we don't need to clamp. Okay, clamp is redundant to this line. Uh, all right, so then we say one times negative rel phase. All right, let's try it again. Um, it still looks like it's just skating. So if I look down at advance, advance is always zero. I see foot changing sometimes, but I think it's just when the speed changes because I hit something and it, yeah, it resets. Um, So, phase is changing, time is changing, time is negative. Time it should not be negative. I never divide by, fa by pi. Dun, 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 dun. Yes, I have a computer science degree. It's not very important though to my skill set. Okay, so phase seems to always be 0 0.5 to 1.0. It doesn't seem to ever go below 0 0.5, which would suggest I didn't do something right. Nope, I saw it smaller. Okay. Um, but we're still skating. Our advance is still tiny. Our time is still tiny. Is our Should our time be that tiny? Our time to impact, how fast is this? Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, our time is pretty fast, so it shouldn't go that far. But are we like not getting our velocity correctly? Oh, we're doing vel sub zero instead of vel sub one. That's why. Okay, now maybe we finally got it right. Maybe. Whoop! I see it's spazzing. Nope, it's still skating. Long guy, you get going, get going again. There we go. Nope. Nope, no difference at all. Because say now foot advance does have a non zero value. You can see it counting down. It is trying to push out ahead, it's just not pushing out ahead enough. Or it's not having an effect. Am I not using that? But we are adding it to foot spacing and then foot spacing is what we use to compute everything after that so it should affect it like what happens if we just multiply this by eight okay it's pushing it out in the wrong direction foot spacing is not the variable I thought it was Put spacing is it's a side variable. Ah, that's why it's height based. Okay, what's the actual forward one? It's the other one. Y right. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. This is the one that's coming out of the circle animation, not out of the phase. It uses mag, which is the move velocity, which isn't really right. If you're going sideways, it really wants this other thing. This thing. Oh, not that one. Yeah, that one. Let's move this up. Oh, 
that's why the sideways why that's why when walking sideways it's totally broken because we don't actually do this stuff correctly yet um so i moved that up and i'm not actually going to fix it yet i'll come back to that okay so this just needs to be I should have known that because foot spacing is the same for both of them, whereas y, y right is different for each. All right. Now maybe it's right. I always say that every time. They both look pretty skatey. It is advancing by a certain extra amount, but again, I don't see it. All right, let's do this again. Why do I see like no effect from that. It's clearly doing stuff. Advance Advancing by as much as 0.35 multiplied by 8 because the out the print doesn't show the times 8. Um, I see the foot distance moving down in a way that should be visible oh maybe that because it can't reach it's too far out so it can't reach to there so the IK doesn't get there I would think it would show something different though um, all right so let's make the legs Four times as long. Where do we compute the leg stuff? Two link IK. Oh, that's the wrong side. That's the left. It's right. No idea what that's going to do. I know that's going to help because now he's just got legs that are way too long. I'm not sure he can even place them. Nope, they're they're just fixed distance forward. They're they're still just gaming. Uh, I guess I only need to make it like twice as long to tell what I was trying to do, or even just a little bit longer. Um, there's no sign of it trying to push it really far forward. So, what does that mean? Why does this not have any effect? I see that foot being huge. Why does that not, am I not using this number? Why right? And I push that through this. Use that to compute poly, use that to find foot. Stomp the foot with the foot. Why is that not having an effect? Well, 
I don't know. I don't understand what's going on here. Um, where do we draw the feet? Right here. This overwrites right foot. No, but so does that. So it shouldn't be a problem. Back right foot rig. Let's just do that one. Yeah, right foot. Yeah, it's supposed to turn red if it couldn't reach it. So I don't think that's the issue, but let's just go ahead and draw where we're trying to put it, just in case. should be two feet. They may not be dis dissimilar enough to tell. Yeah, you can see a little bit of them being different. You can see a little flicker there of two feet. Um, all right, so that's just showing where the I the difference in what the IK manages to do. Where right, this is picking the IK target, and then the IK code is in the rendering. So the target is still wrong. So why is the target wrong? We see that this number is huge. Right? We see that number being really big. Why does that not then matter for the foot placement? It goes through that. It should be some in enormous distance away which we, because we see it print an enormous number. Right, these are measured in voxels, so we see the foot like up to five or six. So it should be trying to put it five or six blocks out, but we don't see that in the foot rendering. We see the foot rendering, we see the extra foot is not six blocks ahead, as far as I can tell. Yeah, it's not, it ain't anywhere on here. I don't understand that. Why is that? Why does that number print big, but this computation not? Just perturb it and see if I can see any changes or something really weird going on. Like, is this not the code that's running? Is some other code running be again? Did I, do I have two copies of this code and it re rewrites it somewhere? Find placement poly. Poly comes from that. What? So this is just wrong. This is supposed to be Y right. So it was probing the ground in the wrong spot. Then why was it? Uh, because then when it renders it, no. Why? But that was zero zero. So I think this was that same mistake that I forgot the foot spacing. I was thinking when I wrote this that foot spacing was the forward position. 
I think. Uh, and here it adds a forward amount. Okay, so now this should just be insane and garbage. Yep, that looks pretty insane and garbagey. Yep, all right, good. So now if we back out our insane garbage, we're still skating. Oh, nope, in fact, we're not even skating. We're slowly advancing it along a little curve. But the whole point of this was it's supposed to be reaching all the way forward and placing the foot where it will eventually land. That was the whole point of all this code. All right, so if we multiply this by some amount, is that going to get it closer to being correct? Now it's the skating. Okay, now it reaches too far forward. Finally. But it's not drawing it where we wanted the foot to be. Remember I added the Foot placement or rig is supposed to show where it's trying to put the foot, and I don't see it being drawn anywhere. I don't see it anywhere in front of the character. So I don't know where it's trying to reach the foot to. And that wasn't enough. So I probably have some a bug in the phase conversion stuff, but. Yeah, I still see it flickering in there. Um, okay, so if, why is that render not working correctly? Did I not use this all the right variables? Right foot a rig, right foot a rig, right foot a rig. Eight forward offset. What is that? Oh, that's the the distance between the ankle and the center of the box, I think. Um what would uh how, okay, so I have two problems. One is that the debug code that I'm trying to render to understand the other bug is not rendering properly, and I don't know why. Let's change it to matte red, just so we can see it. Yeah, so you can see the red foot in there. I don't know why it's not in a different spot. Why is that the same foot? Um, is that just because I'm not pushing it far enough ahead again? So I need to go back to this that actually really pushes it away. No, it that doesn't make any sense. It shouldn't be exactly the maximum distance the scales can, can reach away. What? Alright, 
Entonces, pues era... It makes no sense. The whole point of this is that it should be where the foot is trying to reach to, not where the foot actually reaches. It's the thing that's computed before the IK. Unless we're rendering the biopic twice, because it does overwrite the state. No, it recomputes the state right here. Yeah, it computes the state there. Oh, I'm caching it before. I can beat the state, that's why. So it was always the last frame. Okay, so I think I fixed the debugging. So now it should actually display where it's really trying to go. Which should be somewhere insane. Yep, there. Okay. And it's no longer even on the ground because I've totally futzed with this code. Okay. All right. Finally, we can see what's going on. Now. Dun, 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 dun. Let's multiply that by four and see what that's doing. Where's the red foot? I don't see the red foot. I guess it's just inside it. It's not far enough out that it can't reach it. Yeah, okay, there we go. Okay, so times four isn't enough, times 16 was too much. I don't know why the factor, the missing factor would be what it is, but let's just make sure we can see what's going on. All right, now we can see what's going on. What we want is for that red thing to be s stopped on the ground. It wants to just be in a fixed place on the ground instead of sliding. Too bad I can't tilt the camera up and down. Oh, there, I can do it like that. Um, right, so that's sort of what it should be like. I don't know why it requires a multiply by 10 to get somewhere close to the correct behavior, but that's sort of what we're trying for here. And then the whole point is that we have to interpolate the path of the foot. We don't want to tell what the foot to try to actually be hitting that point all the time, but we want that point to be computed correctly up front was the whole the whole point of all this. Now we have a point that's being computed kind of correctly, if we can figure out how to fix this times 10 thing. <clears throat> all right. Times 10 seems pretty improbable. Like it might be something totally different. It might be that something's using the wrong variable and so it happens to be off by a factor of 10 or so. Check my uh, Twitter mentions. See if anybody's talking to me. Nope. Okay. Uh, yes, it's procedural animation. So, so we need to get the foot placement right. Then we can start worrying about getting the animation animating the foot placement, the 
current foot target we, once we get the foot placement correct. So y times 10. It wasn't quite right. You could see it was unstable, which it probably wouldn't be if it was correct. So it's probably not, it's probably is more like the wrong variable kind of thing. All right, so the relative phase stuff seems reasonable to me. Maybe what we should do is not convert all this stuff into phase. Maybe this stuff shouldn't be in terms of pi. Maybe it should go zero to one. That would simplify our lives a little bit. Probably shouldn't make this change at the same time I'm doing with all this other stuff, but. That shouldn't be divided by two. Maybe instead of being phase, it should be in time. Well, let's fix the other one while we're at it. Does this stuff use the phase? I don't think it does. No, it doesn't. Um, Now the times 10 is terribly wrong. So I didn't fix something in there correctly. Or that fixed the bug. That would be amazing. But I don't think so. No, it's not pushing out. Almost, it's a little too fast. Oops, it's not 1415, that's pi. Oops, I just double closed. I can't I have imagine any reason why that would be the correct factor to convert by, but you know, you just try something sometimes to, as a debugging thing. It's kind of correct, but again, it's got a little weird squishiness that I don't think is right. It moves back and forth a little bit. So like I said, I think that just means I'm using the wrong variable somewhere here. But there are very many variables, so I'm not sure what it would be. It could also be that this divide by two is wrong, but I don't think it is. Could I be doing wrong here? Why would that stuff be slippery? Uh, 
dur, 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 dur. I don't know. I don't have a. I don't have a clue. I can't think what I'm doing wrong. And breaking in the debugger ain't gonna help because I'm printing out those variables like, and I don't know what. I don't know what I would look at in the debugger that would help me understand. Are we sure that we got that velocity thing correct? So it's printing out the second velocity number. Should be constant ish. It's a little more variable than I would expect. I guess because I keep bumping into things, it's the terrain isn't flat. Or I guess I'm accelerating slowly, like whatever my physics is, it's just slowly accelerating. Uh, which I guess then could uh, account for the foot placement being moving a little bit would be because my speed isn't constant. Whoa, why is this stuff hyper speed? Why is time running hyper fast? It's weird. My speed up thing doesn't. I must have a bug. No, oh. where is? Oh, I don't. That's not how that stuff works anymore. Maybe. Yeah, scan codes instead. Scan code B, slow motion, it's one, 0 1, 1.0. So when I toggle off slow motion, all right, is it, or is it just ultra fast always? It's ultra fast always. I must have checked in something that makes it ultra fast, or I broke something. Um, or I just don't remember how fast this game is. I don't think that's correct though. Uh, tab. Hack. Fast forward. There's no way it used to, it used to move this fast. Why is this about the right speed? Yeah, you can see the turning is wrong now. Why Why is everything running four or five times faster than it should? What in the world is going on? I 
I can imagine that this was something I did to speed up animation for testing the animation. I just don't remember it, so. Or even that I did it for pathfinding to, to Hmm. Well, I didn't comment it, so I'm just going to have to search through all the code to find out where that's happening. So where do we... Loop mode. Gotta stop calling it that. Time slow motion. Do I multiply by anything else anywhere? I don't see it being multiplied by anything else anywhere. Draw, where do I do the rotation animation? I don't even know how that works anymore. Um, where do I draw the scene? In a box of world. I don't see it doing the rotations animation in there. Um, but it's, I know it's some, um, one of these somewhere in here, text anim. Text anim offset. Oh no, that's the scrolling. And I saw that the scrolling did update. It's the rotation animation. That's something different. No, it is text anim offset. Logistics ticks. Okay, who's calling logistics tick? Process tick raw. I don't think I'm calling this multiple times, am I? Doesn't look like it. Looks pretty straightforward to me. It's not multiplied by four. Slow motion is 1.0. I don't get it. I don't know why this is all running so fast. Motion is 1.0. Very, very weird. It's very disturbing. I have no idea what I did to change that. <laughs> what the heck is going on? see how fast the arms move on these things yeah yeah look at the arm moving there's no way this was correct oh no it's too slow um i have no idea no idea What is this loop even doing? Because this is all commented out, so this is doing nothing except subtracting carry DT, which is never used anywhere. Um, This just makes no sense.
and now my guy moves way too slow. Why would the logistics sim yeah, the animation rate for that stuff actually looks a little slow. But the pickers look about right. The tab is not working to... Oh, right, it does. I forgot that the tab speeds things up without speeding up the animation. So you can see the logistics running even though the scrolling doesn't speed up. And these are outputting invisible things again instead of green things. All right, whatever. But yeah, now the character is moving too slow. So it's definitely specific to the logistics system. I don't know then if it's specific to the logistics system, we'll just leave it alone and come back to that. That's just really weird. Um, yeah, it wasn't the time to from earlier. So anyway, so back to what we were doing, which is working on this um, the foot placement problem. Why the foot placement is wrong, right? Is that what we were on? Why do I not even see the foot anymore? Oh, okay, there it is. All right, yeah, why I had to have a fudge to make this even close to correct. which is back in main. So this is without the fudge. Wait, this is without the fudge. It doesn't look that bad. Did I refudge it somewhere else that I've forgotten? It's not perfect, but it's not terrible. The fact that it's not perfect is a problem, of course, because it means it will it will do goofy things. You can see when the foot comes off, that's just because the IK can't reach to the the old placement. So the foot comes off, but it's not actually animating at all. So you don't want that. You want the foot, the moment the IK can't reach, it needs to actually start computing the foot. Uh, so we want to think about that too. Where's the red? Oh, right. It's like that. Maybe that's okay. Maybe that's working correctly. I don't think it is because it is still sliding, but. Yeah, no, that's super slidey there. We just can't normally see it that much. Um, so I don't think that's right. I don't think this is looking ahead the right amount. It's just that, that the whole thing of even when it's wrong, it's continuous, so it eventually seeks to the right spot, works. Um, which is maybe good enough. Maybe we don't have to fix this bug. Maybe we can just live with it. Uh, because it's never going to be perfectly correct anyway, because it's trying to predict where the foot's going to go, and it doesn't know that. So, now that we have a foot location that we actually want, we want to start seeking to that. You have to look at where we are, arc to there, and then this is finally back to this problem that I was talking about here, where this problem I was talking about here where we need to re restart the arc. So in terms of the curve, what we can do is do the curve entirely in the Z, which is the way it's currently working, which is that you make the motion in the horizontal plane, so this is with respect to time, make the motion horizontally be that, 
and make the motion in the vertical be that. And that will result in you know, going from here to here like that and going from here to here let's do it and from here to here like that that's terrible going from here to here like that and importantly it means that like if you were for some reason to be trying to go from here to here it's not going to do that right it's going to do it's very hard to draw this it's going to do that basically right and maybe what you're thinking is if the points are like that it should be perpendicular it should do a nice curve that's perpendicular to that and that's not what it'll do uh, it'll do um, it'll take this line and add an offset and it's going to be more like that I can't actually draw this the difference right but it's something more like like that um, which is maybe not ideal but is a lot simpler to do in the math so uh, it lets us separate concerns so the way we do that is we add a linear motion from the old position to the new position Time to foot impact is going to go to zero. So, um, so we need some state, but the state needs to be in world space. The state needs to be in world space because uh, the actual foot placement we found is in world space. We didn't we didn't run this logic here, except in world space. So we have it in world space. So. And here we're in object space and here we're in the world space so what we want to do our effective world space is right foot dot x ba right foot dot y Z right. So plus pos x plus y. That's the actual world space thing. After we've computed this, wait. Okay, I I I'm confused. Um, that's the old placement. This the new placement is yes. Okay, right. I see. It's these, but these are in object space, and we need them in world space. So it's this. Okay. So this is where we think the foot should go. New goal, last position. But that's not actually the need to be corrected by IK. And the IK actually outputs it to that. So I don't even need to do that. I wanted to solve it first without the IK, 
So we'll go ahead and do that and not because the IK correction may screw us up. I don't know. So I need to try to solve it without worrying about the IK first. Okay, so. So what we want is conceptually to interpolate, except as I talked about in that, in the uh, Milton thing, it's not really going to be an interpolation. But we effectively want to interpolate from the old position Uh, it actually goes to the other order. Time to foot impact is zero when we reach the new goal. So we kind of want that. But the last position is dt ago. Do we have dt here? We do not have dt here. Um, so we actually need to know that. We need to know how long ago that was. Um, is there a global DT? I don't know why I called it. We're just looking at this loop mode global timer. So Um, so what we want to do is be a old timer equals global timer. And then we can say, here we can say, So we can do that. And then we want to move so what we're trying to lerp is so if, it, if we write it like that conceptually we were trying to do uh, x equals original position, y equals new position, t goes from 0 to 1. But what we now have is time to foot impact remaining time. So that equals 1 minus t. And we have last time step um, which is t prime so we know the old lerp thing so old lerp previous was lerp T minus last time step original position goal. No, that's not the way to think about that. I don't want to even think about the older. That's that's the whole point of this. Okay. How do I think about this? It's just a really easy thing. I'm just trying to get my brain to the map. Uh, if I just brute force this, um, I have a number line like this, here is uh, zero, last time step, and time to impact, time to foot impact. Um, this is negative last time step, and this is zero. So then, and I have old position, and I have 
new goal. And I want to solve for this. All right. And uh, it's just a linear, it's just a linear relationship. So um, that should be a linear remap. Zero, comma, linear last time step, comma, time to foot impact, comma, old position, comma, new goal. That's why I have STB linear remap, so I don't have to solve those problems. Um, okay, so now I should be able to substitute these things and get this all to be correct. So, um, This is rotating. It's a little weird because we find the ideal placement, which can itself be perturbed. Now let's just ignore that and just see what happens. So, um, we can't work in ob space is the main thing. Like these these things are working in ob space and I have to make them not work in ob space now. So um, and I have a non one. It's B A right foot. So oh I've overwritten B A right foot, which I don't want to do. Um, old equals a yeah, old right foot so when later I change it from old right foot to right foot I can just use that it's unchanged so we go old X so we're gonna do this for the X and Y and Z yeah we will do it for all three um, so SB linear remap zero negative last time step time to foot impact now, if both of those are zero, this blows up. So let's do this. And then go from old position, new goal. New goal is PA. Um, wrong, 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 wrong. This is all in the wrong spot. Uh, we'd still have to compute where the foot is supposed to land. That is all supposed to be up here. It's only once we found where the foot's supposed to land that we're supposed to interpolate. <clears throat> okay. Um, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. All right, like that. Maybe. Did I forget something? Is that all I had to do? Just those linear remaps? Dun, 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 dun. Mold, right foot, foot. What did I call it? Last time, old time, old time. Old time.
Nope. Not even close. It just teleports up. So somewhere I overwrote something or something. Um, I save, I save after I interpolate, but that shouldn't matter. No, I want to save, I do want to save that right there. It's the old position right there, yeah. The target is foot, not right foot. I don't know how that would ever work. I have no idea what that would have, that should never have worked. I know we're overwriting it here, that's the problem. Let's just do it like this. The foot moves gradually, it just doesn't actually make it up to where it's supposed to make it up to. <coughs> and I forgot to add in the Z. Uh, Right, so we want the z to follow this curve that's determined by z right. Um, we can't superimpose that. So after we save it, Because we want the foot computation to just do a line trace, oh, right, I closed it. Uh, corresponding to the elevation change of the foot. We, we want to superimpose a curvature of lifting the foot on top of what just interpolates a linear motion between where the foot positions actually are. So we just need to add that on top. And so it's just a matter of figuring out where to put it so it does add on top. But it's all still wrong because the foot's still not going to be going far enough forward. And I don't know why. It was far enough forward before, so the interpolation is just not managing to push it far enough forward. And I don't know if it's because of all this crazy data handling that doesn't make any sense or if this math is wrong.
This all seems so squirrely and complicated in a way it shouldn't. It doesn't seem like it should be this messy to do. So I wonder if I'm doing it a hard way. Or we are overwriting the Z right here. Oh, right, because we have to for the fine foot placement. Right, right, that's all fine. Um, okay, the first thing we do is grab old, so it doesn't matter as long as we use old. We use old. So we don't have to worry about where that gets written. It's currently getting written late enough that it doesn't matter, but just to be on the safe side. Um, you see where it actually is after we've added the Z right. Right, right, no, okay, it's not about the Z. We're just worried about the X, Y position. It's wrong again. Um, okay, so if we don't do this, So that put us back to where we were. Yeah, the foot's reaching all the way forward. So that does seem right. All right, so is this wrong in some way? Yes, this will be archived on YouTube as usual. Um, what, what am I doing? What's wrong? How is this going? I told you I didn't want to do it with a controller. This is even the easy controller, easiest controller. Um, I mean, it's not. And the whole point is it's not a controller at all. It doesn't have a velocity. It just tries to warp to the right position at the right time. <laughs> Um, oh my gosh, I'm so sleepy. Uh, All right, I'm going to take a five minute break. Okay, look. Uh, so, back in five.
All right. I don't know if that was actually five minutes, but whatever. If you missed it because you thought I'd be gone for the full five minutes, tough break. And if I went longer than five minutes, tough break. All right. So this is failing to get to the destination. Wait, this is still testing mpy, All right, right? So it's supposed to be changed to 0 0.5. Wouldn't that just make it plant instantly? What was that doing? Oh, okay, that's still basically the same as it was. Comes forward, but not fast enough. Uh, we don't need this anymore. Um, why would this math not be right? Last time step looks right to me. Last time step is global timer minus old time, which is the previous global timer. This is larger than that, so this is positive. So to get earlier than now, we go negative time step. Current time is zero. Time to put impact. Time to put impact goes to zero. This goes to zero. Should lorp us to the new goal. Um, if they're equal, foot will just be unmodified, which is correct, because the whole point of this is to compute it into foot. <coughs> On this stuff, it's definitely dead. Z right is not quite correct, is it? Yeah, because we're adding bottom Z. But we'll fix up the Zs later. The Z issues can be addressed separately from the X and Y issues. The question is why the X Y is not right. Um. Seems right to me. Seems right to me. Zero, negative last time step, time to put it back to hold the single. Why, when we get to the very end? Um, will we reach a time? No, this should never be zero. So, normal usage. Uh, We should get a case where time to put impact equals zero. And if that happens, then assert ba right foot dot x equals foot dot x. It should have actually interpolated this back to its to the targeted value. Okay. No, do we ever actually hit that? Yes, we are hitting that. Okay, so it does. It does in fact interpolate it to its final value. But we found that if we if zeroed this, it did look correct. So that was funny to watch the foot uh, trying to find a placement there. So 
So does that mean it is actually correct and it just doesn't look correct to me? Maybe it is correct then. Just doesn't seem like it's far enough forward. Yeah, it seems like it should come farther forward than that. Um let us change the color when it's planted. And then let's switch it back to the other mode, the F0, and see where the plant is having. Maybe that's, I'm being fooled by the fact that I don't realize how late the plant is here, because I can't tell through the IK. Aha, uh -huh. yes. Uh, so that is not right. It's not far enough forward. It needs to be ahead. It's almost under the body at the time it plants. It's right under the body when it plants. It looks like it's exactly under the body when it plants, which is not right. It should be ahead of the body. So, so all this stuff is still wrong. Um, So when time to put impact is zero, this adds zero. But Y right itself should be significantly far forward. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, right? Zero point five when it stops, which is half a block ahead. But it looks like it's right under the actual foot placement. It looks like it's right under. So assuming I'm not cheating the torso's position, like what happens if I just add one just to see? more correct. So is it just not placing it far enough forward when that was being hidden by other factors? Or is this phase not correct and it actually is in the wrong part of the phase? 
Um, okay, when, when the foot plant happens. Oh, right, we don't even want to use this Y right at all. We just want mag over 20. Um, float, foot. Place distance equals mag over 20. Right, right, right. So this was strictly for the animation. We don't even need it anymore because we're not using the circular animation. Let's actually. Well, yeah, let's just set it to zero. So here it's foot place distance. Yeah, we haven't fixed the left foot at all, so we're going to leave that alone. All right, now let's take a look. And that could be why we could never get this thing to look right, was because that was always wrong. The time to impact thing was, it was being fought with by that. Oh, I'm not drawing the target, that's right. Okay, it still doesn't turn blue till it's under it. It's still not right. So it's about half a block that it thinks it should be ahead, which is a pretty small distance. But it still looks like it's turning blue when it's right under it. Claims it's at 0.5 when it turns blue, but it looks like it's right under. But this was an arbitrary number, so we can just change it. There we go. Looks better. <coughs> do that. All right. So now we're doing that, and now we can do this and see if this looks reasonable. And uh, it looks like it's popping still. Oh, right, because the. Why does it jump so far forward as the starting position? All right, so if we use the IK output means changing this to right foot. What does that do? Nope, it's still popping. Why is it popping? Why does it snap to that position and not... Did I, is the interpolation turned off again? No, the interpolation's on. Why is it behaving like the interpolation's off? Maybe because because of that whole reusing the old state isn't isn't actually good. Okay, now it pops all the way forward. When I use the, the IK output as the old position. It seems to not move. It somehow teleports forward, which I don't think it should do. Uh, 
Uh, I know why it's teleporting forward. Fix that. Needs to always happen every frame. Otherwise, the very first frame it teleports a long distance. What is this all nested inside of? Our gate. Now it moves forward continuously. And it's not arcing the Z correctly because I said I'd have to fix that. All right, looking better. The right foot should be pretty continuous. There's no shadows, so it's a little disorienting when the foot goes to the ground and it does snap sometimes. And you can see it pop through the forward there. All right. Better. Better, better. So let's see if we can fix up the Z stuff. So the Z stuff needs to be superposed. So we don't want this stuff now. We just want an arc to the Z. And we just want to add that we don't want to floor it and we just want to superpose the z arc uh, so we still need the old but the ik fix up So we add it, the IK will reposition it, then we'll subtract it out of the IK, which isn't really quite right, but that's okay. Um, so that's redundant now too. That's wrong. Use the old one anymore, do we? Where have the main? Why did I not tab back to main? Oh, it's, on, it's the same file. Um, yeah, we got rid of old right foot. Okay, so let's check this out. Whoa, why is slow motion got so much slower? Oh, it's just 
what I saw. Okay, so that's wrong. It's um, negative sum of the time and or huge, possibly super huge. Uh, I thought I had gotten rid of the thing that made z right. It should just be 0 to 1. Well, I'm 0 to point 0.4 actually. z right, z right, z right, z right. I don't see any z rights. Okay, yep, that's totally wrong. Should be plus equal. No, it shouldn't be plus equal anything. Right, and then I was saying this stuff was in the wrong coordinate space? No, right, I figured that out eventually. All right. Okay, still broken. Still seeking to the wrong spot. Uh, oh, this doesn't have it at all. to be able to step up and I don't know how that works I don't know if I just want to add 1.0 maybe so it can search one higher yeah I guess that that's a little weird that it hit that spot it doesn't seem very far forward again. And it, feet aren't tilting, obviously. It seems like it's not reaching as far forward again. But maybe that's well, what it was doing before, and I just don't remember. I guess it's okay. Yep, and there's the weird physics glitch that causes him to stop. But the right foot is now nice and smooth, following a nice little sinusoidal curve there, vertically. So if he steps up, yep. Terrible uh, step up, but whatever. All right, so we just need to get the left foot to match and see what it looks like. Okay, so you just basically need to redo all these changes to the left foot, which probably is cleanest to just cut and paste the whole thing and convert the rights to lefts and do some other fixes. Disk right. And then. Um, this has to be less than 0.5. This does not subtract 0.5. And greater than 1, real free is equal to 0. And then that should still be a minus real phase. Is that true? Oh, I don't know if that's actually right here. If this runs from phase 0 to 0 0.5, then when we hit 1, we should be at 1. Yeah, OK. Um, and that should be unchanged. I think that everything else should just be like that. Can place foot needs to be different, right? No. Okay. Is one of these like a sign reverse or anything? Doesn't look like it. 
and so this is the old code. And then this right here has to change. There's still a bug, it's still pushed sideways the wrong side. So there was something negated somewhere, foot spacing gets negated. Here. Okay, there's obviously a bug there. Well, I know what it might be. Hello, Alt F4. Oh, crap. Uh, I forgot to update this. So Y left becomes zero. And Z left becomes that. There we go. Woohoo! It needs to tilt the feet. It's pretty flaky when it when that flake stuff does flake out. Side to side is not going to be correct at all if I move sideways. Because it doesn't lead to the side at all. It only leads forward. Does it lead backwards? Let's check backwards. Nope. It only leads forward, <laughs> but that's fine. So yeah, it's crappy, but hey, it's good enough to ship an indie game. Oh, not that way. That was a little bad. The midair. I don't have a jump, do I? No, I should do a jump and fix him. Fix him when he's in free fall. Let's run up these stairs and then free fall on the other far side. Oops. Oh, you can't run up this. I turn off third person. I don't remember. Okay, I can wear off this one. Uh, and this is a run cycle, and it needs to be tweaked to be a walk cycle. That's the other thing. There's this whole notion of multiple gates, and I need to actually implement those and have the walk be a little different, so it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't get so aggressive. Yeah, it's a little spider leggy, but you know. It's got the basics going. Get them going. Yeah, 
Yeah, see, they're at a walk speed and it looks totally wrong because they're lifting their feet in a dumb pattern. But that's fine. We, we will make this stuff more, a little more data driven. Allow for the how does a walk? Yeah, yeah, and when you're walking, you have both feet down for a, a part of the time, so we need to sort of introduce a more better phase logic or whatever. Yeah, and I need to add arms. <laughs> But the arms are just going to be pure animation, no IK. Well, they'll use IK to do the animation, but they're basically going to be pure animation. So, okay, all right. So let's find the to-do list in here. Let's see what we actually did off the to-do list. I never actually read it. We put us halfway from previous position next position put place, and that was always what I tried to do to make it not do stuff too early. Um, we just went directly gates and we were just talking about that torso position lower and tilt torso when one foot is much lower yep can't lower torso when in midair sideways tilt around corners arm animation more data driven just just talking about that foot placement search that's just an optimization I think mainly so this is done or done enough. We can always come back to it if we really want. All right, so so um, I'll take opinions in chat. What do you want me to work on? Should I keep working on making this IK better? Should I do something else? Should I figure out why my factory is running at quadruple speed? Um, go back to the to-do list. Where is the to-do list? See what else we have on the to do list. Oh, yeah, I still haven't installed Sony Vegas. So I checked off maybe because I haven't this is another copy that I had somewhere else speed bug two different people say I should fix the speed bug all right well let's do that then wait this way go back before pathfinding simple collision Make it easy to enable disable vsync for profiling. All right, so let's go to this one 96, case it didn't. That looked fast to me. Nope. Oh, that looks correct speed to me. Okay. I guess we'll just binary search it. D53. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Oh, right, you can't. You can't get log once you're in that. So dumb. Anybody know how you get a git log that goes beyond your current detached head? Uh, I guess I have to scroll back to it. Zero zero C five C. Get checked out. Was am I on? Was I on master or was I on working? I was probably on master. Given the time I had by four commits. Yep. All right. So I just did zero zero C five C. Or B nine one B. Whoops. Why is that? I must have just forgotten to try one later. Yeah, I forgot to check that in, and it must have been for a while. Um, no, I don't know where SVVEC came from. Um, I know what SVVEC I used. Maybe it's out of. Try this one. Yep, now it's super speed. It's not. Maybe better player physics from controls.
There it goes. Still fast. So I think that's going to be it's going to be one of these two. Yeah, I already did this one, so it's got to be that one. Yep. All right. So get diff. See FD one six FDT eight seven. Hey, look, process tick raw, right there. These change from 60 to 240. So why did I do that change? What was I thinking? Oh, look, it's also where I checked in SCB back. So why did I make that change? No comments on it. Well, I don't normally get to do this, but you know what I'm going to do? <clears throat> I don't normally get to find out what I was thinking at the time I did something, but I'm just going to go look it up. So I want to find a place where I check in so I can see what my check-in comment is. That's why that was. I'll turn on the audio so you guys can hear it as well, hopefully. Um, Three, four, can't quite read that. There's B3, A8. So what are we currently on? Oh, we just can't check out master. And then still run that diff. Okay. So get log. Okay, so with these right here, and then what which ones can I see on here? Procedural legs move object origin to feet. Procedural legs move object origin to feet. So it's was before this. Maybe that was on a different day. Physics controls. More responsive player controls. Okay, that was the previous one. That's foot planning. Who 
ですよね。Better physics from controls. Was that the one? No, it was the one after better physics from controls. Okay, so right now is when I might make this change. Although I might have already made the change. It's all rendering. Yeah, I was trying to make the physics smoother, so I ran the physics at a higher tick. I mean, it doesn't really matter why I did it. Or maybe it's a lot later. It's all just animation stuff. Promise it's just going to be a really fast change, so I have to search some pretty fine granularity to find it here. Oh, I already have it on the t done in today's stream. Wait, was it the more responsive controls? Was that the one I said? Better player physics from controls. Plant feet and player animation was the one that. Wait, I can see the conveyor belts, so we can check if the conveyor belts look. Yeah, exactly. This is a really slow binary search, though, because it's not a binary search. Yep, they are very fast. Could just barely see it. Yep, yeah, you can see they're super fast. So somewhere in here I changed it. This is 414. Better player physics, so it hasn't been done yet. It hasn't been checked in yet. It could have been done already. All right, I may have to give up. Oh, do I have the annotations? Ooh, the annotations will tell me. I bet I have annotations for this. Uh, 
where are all those annotations? Did I, are they still just in my inbox somewhere? Have it said 49, is it 48? All right. Annotations, do your magic work here. Uh, what do I want to look for? Search for tick, maybe? Nope. Nope. Um, What was that function? Maybe it'll have the function name. Uh, wasn't loop load, it was process tick, I guess. Yeah, process tick. Nope. Is it not this one? It has to be that one, right? No, oh, okay, so it just doesn't have that name annotated. Which may mean he doesn't have it annotated at all. That would suck. Um, not a criticism of the annotations. Like, it may not have seemed important. It's very hard to read this. Does he notate when I make commits? I don't think so. Oh, he does. All right. Wait, but these commits are totally not. Okay, here we go. So it's after this. So we add the vec. Add the slow motion mode. Oh, I missed where the commit happened. I did not see it. Run the game to find the moment. Just let me tweak it. I don't see anything in here that sounds like that change. Two thirty eight to three fifty six. So I have an hour and a half to review. <sighs> God came it more often. Um two thirty six to two thirty six to three fifty six. So if I can find a place where I can see the conveyor belts, here we go. Couldn't really tell. No, those are normal seed. So it's after 248.
that's still okay at 311. So it's between 311 and 356. But I stay away from the conveyor belts most of the time is the problem when I'm doing this stuff. There we go. That looks correct still. Yep. So somewhere in between 334 and 356. Still correct. Okay. It's got to be in the next 15 minutes. Or did I get the search wrong? Did I misread which commit it was? Oh, here's where I add slow motion. Sorry, I sorry I wasn't looking. Three forty eight nineteen. So somebody in chat. I had covered up chat accidentally. Yep, here it is. All right, so why? Oh, because the slow motion is too, no, that's not why. Yeah, okay, it is because the slow motion was not speedy enough, was stepping. Okay. So without that, the slow motion was steppy. Okay, so we decided to up our tick by four, 60 to four, 240. So now we can, I could have just done this fix right away, but I just wanted to understand what was going on. Um, so uh, um, you could, I could see in that when it was running in slow motion before I made that change that the, the character animation was totally smooth, but the ground was moving in steps because we were running in slow motion, but the physics was still running at 60 FPS. It, it wasn't making the physics run fi at finer rate uh, because I decided to use fixed size steps for the physics. So now the fixed size steps are 240. So I just need to change the logistics system. Uh, small ticks, put that in a header. It might be in a header. Oh, uh, it's a long tick. Oh, right. The long tick is the tick. Okay. So if we go up as we did earlier, and change the logistics long tick to four times bigger. Oh, headers. All this stuff got reset when I checked out the old DSPs. So we go find long tick, and we make that four times bigger, so 48. And then the, uh, that should, the conveyor belt animation should automatically be fixed, but we have to manually fix the rotation animation. So, uh, and I looked at and found where that was earlier, but now I've forgotten where I found that that was. It was directly hard coded in here, text anim or something like that. Text anim offset. So this just needs to go still logistic ticks. It doesn't change that. Okay. Nope, it's still wrong. Those are animating wrong. Maybe that's, no, the texture scroll is separate from this. Why is this logistics tick? It should now be ticking the long ticks. Ah, the long ticks. Logistics ticks are, okay, right. So this needs to be shifted by five. All right, there we go.
All right. Now, the other way I do game physics sometimes is to actually use the past NDT rather than to convert to fixed time steps. And if you do that, then the slow-mo is magically good. And if you want fixed time steps for reproducibility and you want good-looking slow-mo in-game because you want to do bullet time or something, then you have to actually sort of do both. You have to allow your time step, to, your fixed time step to change, but still convert to fixed time steps. And then you just convert to shorter fixed time steps. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, uh, I'm going to take a, like a one minute break. And while I'm taking that break, uh, go ahead and make suggestions what I should work on next since I fixed the thing you told me to work on. Um, that's all factory ideas. Do I have non-factory stuff? There's various non-factory stuff. And I can go back to working on the character stuff if you want. Shoot guns, explode stuff, and character arms are some proposals.
read my DMs or or whatever. <clears throat> so, uh, procedural terrain textures. That's not on the list, I don't think. <laughs> A pseudo wing towel work on the list. Is that in here somewhere? Oh, right. More work on terrain. CMC pseudo wing towel approach. Um, maybe I could work on slip blocks and then um start thinking about how to make physics account for slip blocks because the physics like there are slip blocks in there currently and the physics just ignores them treats them as full blocks i don't know i don't really feel like that Well, I wasn't denying the pseudo wing tile stuff. It was the sort of procedural terrain textures that somebody said that I was saying is not on the list. Shadows, yeah. Shadows are interesting because I was like originally kind of avoiding them because I don't want to draw all the terrain twice because I was trying to push out the view distance, but it's possible to cache that, so it might actually be possible to do a decent job, I don't know. Without without too much performance overhead without cutting performance in half. I'm thinking I might just stop because I'm just, none of this sounds appealing. So that's usually a good, if I, it's a good sign that I'm just not into it. Um, the rather than try to force something out, it may be better to just stop. Plus, I need to take a nap. Mm. So old. I'm so old. <clears throat> I only slept for like six hours. Um, or less. What else did we fix today? Continuous foot motion fix. Logistics. Um, I 
Yeah, let's put shadows on the to-do list. Because it's probably worth doing. I'm going to put it in two places. I'm going to put it near the top, even though I don't use the top that way these days. And then we'll put... I guess, I guess when you make changes to terrain, when you dynamically change terrain, you do have to rebuild the whole, the, at least the whole area that that casts to. When you delete something, if you add something, you don't have to. You can just add that in. But <coughs> alright. Yeah, we'll stop there. Um, so, um, thanks for watching. I hope you found that educational. And, um, you know, it's a uh, um, pretty great program, and you're a, the best audience. Uh, I think this game is going to be huge. So, here we go. See you next time. Bye-bye.